Good day to everyone. This day, we're going to talk on how do we create plots in R. So after we have performed some data manipulation in R, we can now be sure that our data is really the data that we wanted to perform our data analysis. But before we we'll dig into performing data analysis, we'll start with creating graphical representations for our data, for which we are going to talk on how do we create plots in R? So to start with, we are going to define the learning the different learning objectives that each of you must be able to attain by the end of this lesson. You should be able to identify different plots that can be created using R. You have to, you should be able to perform creating and exporting plots in R, and you you should be able to describe the different functions in R which are which are used to create and export plots. You may have with you a computer but it but it's optional. A lecture notebook to take the notes, assessment notebook for you to answer our learning activities and learning probe, a black ball pen and an intermediate paper. Well this activity recalls your knowledge of some graph used to present data. You may use your assessment notebook to answer this part. I want you to list down some graph for which you have already known, and I want you to provide a short description for each graph. And by this, I want you to collaborate your answers with your groups, as I'm going to create groups for you to work with. And then after which, I want you to share answers with, with the class. Well, for our learning probe, this activity allows you to recall or identify some ways to create graph using R. So if you have known some any, if you have known in advance how do we create plus in R, I want you to share your knowledge in to the class. Well, creating plots has been integrated to R, thus making R one of its strengths in creating graph. Okay, it's one of the major advantages of R towards other statistical software packages. And then this plot is of excellent quality and are fully customizable plots and statistical graphics. And plots are truly useful to present data since one can quickly identify trends and patterns in our data. We'll be talking here some plots that we can be used or that we can use to present our data. And one of these plots that we're going that to talk this day is the basic plot. Well, the basic plot is actually a plot used to present a plot of continuous variable against a number of observations. And it can be created using the plot function. Now, for example, if we're to create a plot for the girth of the tree's data set, then we will issue this command. Therefore, the plot function to tell R that we are going to create R, or that, that, we're, that we are going to create a plot. And then, what we are going to do here is we have here the girth variable variable for which we are going to create a plot from our tree's data set. So make sure to identify the function used to create our plots, and then the variable that we are going to create a plot, and then the data set that we are going to use to, in order to create our graph. Now the output of the plot function is a graph as presented on the R or displayed in our plots tab. And then the default style of our plot is one presented below. The plot function is just is not just limited to one-dimensional plots, and the plot type can be created. It depends on the type and number of variables as input the plot function. And perhaps we can further customize our plots as we go along with our discussion. Now again, as I have said earlier, that the default style of the plot function is symbols. If you can recall, the plot we have created, it represents there our circular symbols to present the data. And then one can change these symbols to lines. To set this or to do this, you have to set the argument at the type argument to L. So to change from symbols to lines, you may use the, the type argument or the type argument then set its value to L. And aside from L, one can also use B for both lines and symbols, H for horizontal lines or H for vertical lines, 
and S for steps. For example, we have here, so we still use the plot function, then we are going to plot our girth variable from our trees data set. Okay, plot, then we have our girth variable to represent the variable for which we are going to create a plot. And then it is taken from the trees data set. So notice here that we added here an argument with the name of type with a value of L. So what does it mean? So it simply means that from symbols type, we change that one to lines. So if you want to execute this command, it will display a base of plot which uses lines to present its data. This is for figure for type is equal to L. Type is equal to H for vertical lines. Type is equal to B for both horizontal lines and uh, for both line and symbols as for steps. Now, well, that's the basic uh, basic plot. We use the plot function to create this graph. Well, aside from the basic plots, you can also create a histogram. So what is a histogram? So a histogram is used to create a plot for a continuous variable, enabling you to assess its probability distribution. Thus, if the data follows a normal distribution, then its histogram should look like a bell curve. Now to create our histogram, we use the hist function. Earlier, we discussed on plot function to create our basic plots. To create a histogram, we use the hist function. So for example, this is a sample of a histogram, a basic histogram. So we will see in the next slide how we can create this histogram. So to do this, we use the hist function to tell R that we are going to create a histogram. Then we have to define our data set for which we are going to construct our histogram. And then of course, you need to specify the variable for you to create a histogram. So in this case, it now presents the histogram of the height variable of the tree's data set. But then again, we can further customize this histogram. Now to let us know whether this data really follows a normal distribution, we can create also a line curve or a curve line to show its distribution. Well, the number of the number of bars created in the histogram is actually, is actually automatically assigned by R. However, one may specify the bars number using the breaks argument. Well, the general format, if you wanted to specify the number of bars, is listed below. We have here the hist function to tell R that we want to create a histogram. Then the data set we want to use, followed by the variable that we are going to create a histogram, and then the number of bars from our histogram. So I said here that breaks is equal to 10, so it means to say that there will be 10 bars to be displayed in our histogram. Also, the num the also a histogram of frequencies is automatically created by R. And then to create a histogram of densities, where the total area of the histogram is equal to 1, one has to set the frequency argument to f. Again, so in this case, so note that the frequency label has been changed to density. So in this case, we still construct a histogram from, from our height variable of the three data set with the argument freak is equal to 1. So our, our frequency is equal to f, so it's, which means to say class that the density of this shaded area here is equal to 1, which is more or less equal to the frequency of our data set. And then one also, we use the curve function to fit a normal distribution curve to the data. So as I have said earlier, that we can easily see whether the data follows a normal distribution if our histogram has a curve line. So this is done by the use of the curve function. By adding the normal distribution curve, you can see how well the data fits the normal distribution. And then to add, an, to add 
the normal distribution curve, we use a curve function directly after the hist function. So take note, take note of that, that the curve function always follow after the hist function. So at the same time, the histogram is still being displayed. Note that the density curve is only meaningful for a histogram of densities, so you might also set the frequency the freak argument to f. So for example, so we have here class, the hist function to tell R that we need to create a histogram. Then, and then our data set and our variable to be created a histogram. So then we set the freak function of freak argument to f. So that is the frequency. Then we use this curve function to display a curve line that will fit our normal distribution. This is constant, the norm. Then we have here the f that is still constant. Then we have here another constant from our function mean then trees here represent our data set and height here represents our variable that we are going to construct our histogram that is the mean take note class that trees and height here are just are just argument therefore you can change these values depending on the variable and the data set that you want to use but then D norm x mean and sd and and is equal to t are always constant. So sd here mean as we have known mean is, is used to get the average. Then sd here is used to get the standard deviation of our trees, then height variable. Then we have here the argument add is equal to t. Mean to say we have to append the curve line to our existing histogram. So if we press enter from our keyboard, it will now display our histogram with its corresponding bell curve. So as we can see here that our that more or less our data follows a normal distribution since a histogram displayed a bell curve. So one can see that our data more or less is normally distributed. And then again, if there are missing values, we might need to add an a.rm argument to and set it to t for the mean and sd functions again as we have known that the missing values affects our mean and our standard deviation therefore we have to set this argument to t so that these values will not be included in our data or in our curve line and the general form or syntax for using the hist function and curve function is described below then for our hist function to create a histogram your data set followed by your variable name, then uh, set the frequency or freak variable, freak argument to f, then to add a curve, we will use the curve function, then the denorm, x, so that is constant, mean is also constant, the data set for which we're going to use, followed by its variable, then you may add any that r and total r to exclude any missing values, then we use the sd function to compute for the standard deviation, then our data set followed by our variable that we're going to use. Then we also added any that rm is equal to t to exclude any missing values. Then add is equal to t to append our curve function to our histogram. So are there any questions or clarifications before we'll proceed? So earlier we talked on basic plots and constructing a histogram. So basic plots are basically created using the plot function. And then the histogram is created using the hist function. Then also we can add a curve line to our histogram by using the curve function, with e, uh, using its corresponding syntax to construct this curve function or to constru construct the curve line or to denote a uh, curve line to present the normal distribution. Then one can also create a normal, a normal probability plot then we call that as normal probability plot in addition to simple plots that we have created earlier. So what is a normal probability plot? Okay, a normal probability plot is a plot for continuous variable to determine whether a sample is drawn from a normal distribution. So more or less the same with our histogram and our curve function to check whether the data follows a normal distribution. And the points will approximately or fall approximately in a straight line if the data is drawn from a normal distribution. On the other hand, if these points deviate 
from the standard from the straight line we can say that the data is not drawn from a normal distribution and then to do this we use the qq uh, qq form function again plot for the basic plots hist for the histogram and then for the normal probability plot we use the qq form function okay in the next slide how do we construct this plot well for example we will use the height variable of our tree set set to construct our normal probability plot. Again, to construct our normal probability plot, we use the QQ norm function in our data set that, and then followed by our variable that we are going to use in our in constructing the plot. Well, in this case, we use the trees variable uh, the trees data set with its height variable. So more or less class, okay, th there should be a straight line here to tell which values deviate from a normal distribution, okay? This is now what we call the normal probability plot. This is just to tell whether some, whether the data is taken from a normal distribution or not. So those data, which are very far from our straight line here, are data which are not taken from a normal distribution. Well, a reference line might also be added to make it easier to determine whether the data points fall into the straight line and then to add a reference line just like what we added uh, just like what we add to our histogram which, uh, which is a curve line we can also add a reference line to our normal prob probability plot to determine uh, who are the data or what are these data which should not follow the normal distribution Okay, to do this, we will make use of the QQ line, okay, Q QQ norm to add, to create a normal probability plot, and then QQ, Q QQ line to add our reference line to our normal probability plot function, for example. Okay, so for example, we have here, we tried to create a normal probability plot using the QQ norm function in our three data set with its height variable and then in order for us to determine which data are not taken from a normal distribution we make use or we added a reference line to add a reference line we make use of our Q Q Q line function then the name of our data set with its corresponding data set and when you press enter our normal probability plot has now a reference line okay to determine which data falls into the normal are, are drawn from our normal distribution and which data are not drawn from our normal distribution okay do you have any questions so far or clarifications okay so far we have talked now three plots we have the basic plot that's um histogram then we also talk on the normal probability plot okay so aside from those mentioned plots is that we also have our stem and leaf plot are you still familiar with this okay so we have your st uh, stem and leaf plot we can also create this plot in r so it is another famous plot for continuous variable where the data values are read from the plot okay now to create a stem and left and leaf plot we use the stem function again we use a stem function to construct our uh, stem and leaf plot okay for example if we will create a plot for the three data uh, data set gertz variable we will have the following code again so this one we use a stem function to tell r that we, that we are going to construct a stem and leaf plot and then you have to specify what variable are we going to use and what data set are you going to use to construct our stem and leaf plot. So how do we read this value? This read the class as this is 8, this is 83, 86, and 88. This is 10, so that is 105, 107, 108, 100, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 
So that's how we're going to read the values from our stem and leaf plot. Another is 16. This is 160, 163, 163, 165, 169. Okay? That's how we're going to read the value from our stem and leaf plot. Okay? So another important, ver another important graph or plot that we're going to know is about bar chart. So bar chart, it is useful for summarizing categorical data. Again, they are used to summarize categorical data. Okay, so just to recall, so the plot or the basic plot is created using the plot function. The histogram is constructed by using the hist function. The normal probability plot is created using the QQ norm function. And then the stem and leaf plot are, is, are created using the stem function. So all these four plots are useful to create plots for data for continuous variable. So right now, we have your bar chart which are now applicable for categorical data. So our one that has categories. So a simple bar chart is the one in which it summarizes one categorical variable by displaying the number of observations in each category. So we have a category and its corresponding frequency. And more complex charts can also summarize two categorical variables by displaying the number of observations in each combination of these categories are grouped and stacked bar charts. Okay? So to create a bar chart, okay, one can to create a bar chart, we use the plot and bar plot function. Okay, so for example, if we want to create a bar chart for the feed variable of our chick weights data set, then we will use the following code. Again, we will construct a bar chart of the feed variable of chick weights data set. So to do this, we use this function. The plot function, again, we have the plot function, the same plot that we have used earlier for to construct our basic plots the plot function then followed by followed by our data set and then followed by our variable so if the variable class is categorical what it will present is the bar plot for a given categorical variable so in this case it now presents a simple bar chart okay uh, here are the number the frequency for each corresponding uh, categories of field. So as you can see here, it is a soybean which has the highest number of frequency. That, that, that's what we call a simple bar chart. And then a horizontal bar chart can also be created by adding the horiz argument and setting its value to t. Okay, for example, so we have here, so instead of having a vertical bar chart, we now created a horizontal bar chart. So what we do is just to add the horiz argument and set its value to t. And we now have a horizontal bar chart. Okay? So that's how we are going to construct a horizontal bar chart. Just add the horiz argument and set its value to t. Then a side class from a simple bar chart is now we have here a multiple bar chart, which can be created using the bar plot function. Again, the plot function, they're only used to create simple bar charts. If we have multiple bar charts, we make use of the bar plot function, where there are two categorical values are available. And then there are two styles for multiple bar charts that can be created. The first style for a multiple bar chart is the stack style. Well, for example, if we will consider the tooth growth data set, it has three variables, which are the len, soap, and those variable. Okay, so from here, we are going to construct a multiple bar chart for this data. And then the only factor variable, this you remember a factor variable. Okay, well, a factor variable class, it refers to a variable which has a set of categories. So it is a categorical, categorical in nature. Okay. So from our data set, the only factor variable there is a sub variable, which is, which is either OG or VC. So to do this, and you can convert the those variable to factor as this is fixed for all. 
So the values of the dose variable are 0 0.5, 1.0, and 2.0. And then take the class that we are converting values, okay, from numeric converted to factor variable. So you should remember the function used to convert a numeric entry to factor fa to a factor variable. Okay, so we use the a is that fa as the factor function. Okay, so hence uh, this those variable also serves as category for this data set. And then we can, as I mentioned earlier, that we can convert a numeric entry to a factor variable using the as that factor function. Okay, for example. So again, our dose variable is converted to factor variable using this function. And then we still pass the same argument with its corresponding data set and its variable name. And then we use the supply function to check whether this those variable is already converted into factor variable. Again, if I, if I were to construct two or more bar charts stuck or side by side, we use the bar plot function. But then if we only have a single chart to be created, we just use the plot function. So take note class that uh, we now have two factor variables, which we are from here, we are going to use this value to create our multiple bar charts. So right here, we have just converted the dose variable to a factor variable. And this time, we now create a stack multiple bar chart. Okay, to do this, we make use again of our bar plot function. Again, if you only construct, if you are going to construct only a single chart, we make use of plot function. But then if we have two or more variables or two or more categorical variables, we use the bar plot function. Then we have here the constant function of table. Then the first categorical variable, then followed by the second categorical variable. Then we have our legion that text. Okay, we have here depending on our value. Okay, when you press enter, it now displays that chart. Okay. The second multiple bar chart we're going to consider is a group bar chart. So earlier we call that one as stack bar chart. Why stack? It is because the value are placed on top of each other. So this time we have your uh, multiple bar chart which is placed or which is placed which displays its categories side by side. Okay. And this is done by adding the beside argument and sets its value to t. Again, take note of that. We use the beside argument and then sets its value to t. Okay, for example. Okay, we have here your bar plot function again. This is this is used to construct a multiple bar chart. Then we have a constant. A function of table, then our first categorical variable, then another categorical variable we have since we want to construct a multiple bar chart. Then we add here the beside argument with the value of t to tell R that you are going to construct a multiple bar chart whose categories will be placed side by side. Then we have here uh, the argument legion that tax is equal to t to display the legion for that chart that we are going to construct. Okay, so this time we now have this graph as presented. Okay, so another chart or plot that, that we want to talk about is the pie chart. So the pie chart it is used to plot a single categorical value wherein it is used to display the total number of observation in each category as a portion of the total number of observations. And to create a pie chart, we use the pie function. Okay, for example, so we have here, again, we have with the pie function of total R that we are going to construct a pie chart. Then we have with the table function. And then we have here our data set. And then followed by our variable to be created 
a pie chart. So we now have our pie chart with its corresponding label. So that's how a simple pie chart is created using R. Then uh, suppose there are missing values in our variable. So if you want this to appear as a different sector in your pie chart, you can use the use NA argument and sets its value to if any. Okay. Okay, for example, so to do this, we'll still make use of the pie function total r that we need to construct a pie chart, then the table function, then we have our data set and our variable, and then we added the argument use n a is equal to if any total r that we're going to create another sector for those missing values or the frequency of the missing values for our data set. Okay. Another chart that we're going to consider is the scatter plot. So a scatter plot is used to plot two continuous variables to determine a relationship between them. So this is used to, this are used in uh, correlation study whether the two variables are correlated or or they are related to each other, okay? So say for example, if one variable increases, the other variable also increases, or the other way around, if one variable increases, the other variable decreases. So to create a scatter plot, we use the plot function and give two numeric variables as an input. So for example, okay, so take note class that the first variable is displayed in the vertical axis, while the second variable is displayed in our horizontal axis. Okay, for example, if you will plot the volume against the girth of trees data set, then we will use this command. Okay? Therefore, the plot function, total r that we want to construct a basic plot. Again, our volume here will be placed in our horizontal axis. Oh, sorry, this is your vertical axis. Then the girth variable for our horizontal axis labels and we now have our scatter plot okay again the scatter plot this is used to this is used to, to tell whether the two variables are related to each other okay well the line of best fit in which a linear regression line can be added to our scatter plot using the can be added using the ab line function Okay, so you can you can add the line of best fit using the AB line function. Okay, for example, okay, and this is done immediately after the plot function. Okay, for example, so earlier we created our scatter plot for volume against the girth variable of our trees data set. So what we need to do next is to construct the line of best fit. For our linear regression okay this is you to this is used to tell whether there exists a relationship between our variables uh, which are the volume and girth okay shall we say that if the girth increases this uh, is the volume also increasing so this is we added here the line of best fit okay this is done using the ab line function so ab line here is a constant function is to create the line that a best fit then the QA function then lm that's the linear model or the linear model regression then our volume this is a data, this is our variable plotted against the girth variable then we use the trees data set so take note class that this plot and ab line function should always go together to create the line of best fit okay well uh, from this plot presented, what can you say about its relationship? Is it directly proportional or inversely proportional? Okay. For example, if the girth is 12, its volume is 20. Okay. Approximately. If 14, we have here more or less uh, 28. So it's increasing. Therefore, we could say that there is a positive relationship between the volume and girth of trees in our data set. 
Okay, so one may also join the data points from your scatter plot by setting the type argument to L. Okay, for example, if we're the plot function, then we have our volume variable plotted against the girth variable, then using the three data set, and then we added here type is equal to L to join the different data points in our plot from our scatter plot. Okay, we have here. Take note class that the points here are connected together using lines. That's the use of type is equal to L argument. And then one can also include both lines and symbols in connecting these data points in our scatter plot. This is done by adding the type argument and set its value to B. Need to say both line and symbols. For example, we have here your plot function. The volume is plotted against the girth of our trees data set. And then we added here the argument type is equal to B to say both lines and symbol. The data points here we have here is represented using symbol. And to connect each data points, we use a straight line to connect them to each other. So. This is more or less the plot of our data using a scatter plot with both lines and symbols. Again, you may add the line of best fit using the AB line function. And then a scatter plot matrix can also be created in R for the different set of variables in our data set. So when you say a matrix of a scatter plot matrix, it is now a collection of scatter plots showing the relationship between each pair in a set of variables. So all possible relationship between the variables in the data set are being created. So moreover, you can closely examine the correlation structure of a data set. So you wanted to know whether a relationship exists between variables in your data set. And then the pairs function is used to create a scatter plot matrix of the variables in our data set. Okay, for example, we will construct a scatter plot matrix for our trees data set. Okay, for example, this one. Okay, we have here pairs function total R that we are going to construct a scatter plot matrix. Okay, so we don't need to specify the variables but instead we just let R construct this scatter plot matrix for us then we pass the trees uh, data set as an argument to the pairs function so right here it constructed our it constructed a scatter plot matrix for each of the variables in our trees data set Then one may also select the variables in which you are interested in or creating a, a scatter plus for all of the data set in the variables. Now, for example, if you will create a scatter plot for the sepal length and sepal width and petal length variables of the data set, then we will use this command. Again, we have here, we specify the variables that we are going to construct a scatter plot from which we wanted to know uh, we will create a scatter plot variable for sepal length, sepal width, petal length of our iris data set. So we use class the iris data set and we wanted to create a scatter plot for these variables and we create a scatter plot matrix. Okay, sepal length, sepal width, and then petal length. So this is petal length and sepal width, petal length and sepal length. That's how we're going to construct its relationship. Or sepal width and its petal length. Then sepal width and its sep uh, and its petal length. So far, questions or clarifications. 
So again, we have talked this plots earlier, the basic plots, bar charts, pie charts, histogram, the probability, uh, normal probability plots. Then we can also have your uh, scatter plot. Then we have now your box plot. Okay? The box plot, which is also known as box and whisker plot, shows a summary statistics for continuous variable in graphical form. And then a categorical variable is usually used to group the observations to summarize the distribution for each category. And this is usually done to understand the relationship between a categorical and a continuous variable. And to create a box plot or the box and which square plot, we, is, we use the box plot function. And then for example, we are going to construct a box plot for beta length group by species variable of the iris data set. Then we will use the code below. Again, we are going to construct a box plot for petal length group by species variable of our iris data set. So we have here your different species as Citosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. And we use here the box and whisker plot. And then you may also create a horizontal box plot by, set, by setting the horizontal argument to t, for example. Okay, we have a box plot function to tell r that we are going to construct a box plot for our petal length variable grouped by species variable of iris data set. And then we set the argument of horizontal is equal to t to construct a horizontal box plot. Okay, that is how do we create a horizontal box plot or box and whisker plot. And then one also create a single box plot for a continuous variable that is without a grouping variable. So for example, we have a, your, a single box plot, we have a box plot, then our data set, which is iris, and then our variable to be created a box plot, which is the petal length. So this is how do we create a, sim a single box plot. And then the whiskers can extend up to 1.5 times the interquartile range of data. And that, that is by default. And any values beyond this are shown as outliers. So what, what are these outliers? So when you say outliers, these are the values which are very high or extremely low as compared to the rest of other data. And however, suppose you wanted to extend to the minimum and maximum value. So you have, you have to set the range argument to zero. Okay, for example, okay, box plot to tell R that you want to construct a box and whisker plot of our length variable of species data set, a group by species of iris data set, and then we set the range is equal to zero, okay, to include the outliers. So, so far, those are different plots that we can create using R. Then, after creating these plots, we might want to export these plots because we wanted to copy this graph or plots to our Word document. So, to do this, we might want to export them. And this is done by clicking the export button from our R Studios plots tab, for example. Okay? From our plots tab, this one, there's an option there to export our graph. Whether save as an image, save as PDF, or copy to clipboard. So it depends on your choice on which option are you going to choose. You, you can save it as an image or you can copy a, that one to a clipboard and then you can paste that to your Word document to create a copy of your plot that you have created. And then you mostly want to write our code to export a graph that you have just created. And this is done by using the save plot function. And you have to supply the plot's location to be saved 
with its file name and the file type from your current plot created. Okay, for example, you have here your save plot function and then the directory in which your plot has to be, is to be saved. This is your directory and then you have to include the file name of your graph and then you have where the type is equal to PNG. You can choose JPEG. These are the two acceptable forms or there are still other but these are the two commonly used uh, file format JPEG and PNG. But for now, I'd like to use PNG so I could use type is equal to PNG and make sure that the file name has the file extension of that PNG to tell R that, you, that it will be exported as a portable graphics, a portable network graphics file. Questions so far or clarifications? So, okay, so if there's none, I'd like to see you in our next video lecture on how to customizing this graph. Thanks for watching and see you for our next video lecture.